Good evening everyone and welcome to this test flight tonight looking at a new patched version for the stable build of the Flybywire A320NX. So the current stable build is version 0.5.3 however since the Microsoft update a couple of days ago the world update number three um, took place the stable build had uh, a few issues so fly by wire have very quickly worked on a patch for the stable build now I know many of you are more familiar with the developer build as it has all the latest features and things like that uh, like the tablet uh, for instance and the coffee cup who could forget the coffee cup um, but the stable build doesn't have any of that but many people prefer flying the stable build because it is it has that stable uh, staple to it um, so more people prefer playing the uh, playing the stable build, but unfortunately the stable build doesn't work correctly at the moment. This new patch looks to uh, looks to address that. So this is basically what we're testing today. It's not yet available, but as soon as uh, several tests on this have been done by myself and others, then this patch for the stable build will be released. So we're basically going to do everything that would do we would do for a normal flight, but we're not on any servers. We are not on VATSIM. I am completely alone in the simulator, so if anything goes wrong, we're not going to be upsetting anybody. Um, well, except me and you. So let's uh, let's head in, shall we, and start uh, running through everything. And as I say, we want to check everything works. So good evening, HD. He's there um, as well. Make sure everything uh, is done by the book and that it works as uh, as it should. All right, let's step into our flight deck. So can anyone tell me where we are without looking at the video description? Okay, so we are currently in Mobile, Alabama, which is uh, where Airbus's are built in um, in the USA, one of the Airbus factories in the USA, and we're taking a flight up to Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, I believe isn't that one of the busiest airports in uh, in the world in terms of traffic volume? So what you will notice straight away is those lovely textures that we've been used to they've disappeared in this as we're on the stable build at the moment the fly plaid is no longer there the coffee cup has disappeared um so there are several things that you we, we've sort of rolled back if you like from the dev build which has got lots more new features but this is the stable build so nothing should be wrong with anything that we do all right, so before we go any further, I'm going to get you the current uh, meta for the airport, which is there. Look at that gusting wind. That uh, looks like fun. Thankfully, it's not a crosswind, so we don't need to worry too much about that, but we do need to be aware of it on uh, on takeoff, of course. 
um, and let me get you the operational flight plan for you guys as well so that is available there uh, flight fan when will the patch come for the dev version they don't patch the dev version the dev version is the dev version there's no such thing as a patch for the dev version the dev version is completely is evolving all the time and i've seen some of you in the chat talking i think it's been updated some like six times today um so uh that yeah no patch for the dev version this is a patch for the stable build the stable build has got that stamp on it that uh, it's stable and everything should be working and it was until microsoft ran the update uh hd it'll all be operator error yeah um, unfortunately yes you're probably right for that so alexander what are the changes in the stable build okay i'm going to quickly run through these because again I, the, there are no changes basically this is the exact same stable build that you can download now but some things don't work so for example we had the flaps ballooning effect when we went flaps one on arrival we had um and i'm trying to find a few other things here there's some optimization issues so this should run a little smoother as well in terms of frame rates and things like that so essentially the the flaps is a big one uh, to be fair uh there's lots of other little things like tiny font issues have been fixed as well and as i say performance too so let's get the batteries on let's have a look at contacting the local ground services here see if we can get a power supply which we can ground pussum one one two tree could you please send a ground power unit pussum one one two tree ground power unit is on the road uh lewis why does it say uh std is 2035 is that uh talking about the um the banner at the top of the stream because uh, we've not actually departed yet as uh, you can tell <laughs> okay let's get the ground uh, power on let's get those ideas aligned nav lights on seatbelt signs on no smoking signs the emergency exit signs we'll start that APU going as well in fact not yet we won't uh, we'll get the uh, Get the fuel pumps on. Engine one fire test. Engine two. Engine two. That's the APU. You can tell it's been a long day, can't you? So engine two and APU is all done as well. Now we'll get that APU started. One of the things that I do remember about this in uh, this stable build, if you have a look, they were all turned down to cold. The uh, temperature settings. So we'll. Once that's running, we'll have to set those and make sure that they're working uh, correctly. Now, I do have some uh, airline executives that were so Airbus executives that were taking up to Dallas today, so we'll start getting those on board in uh, a moment. So, I'm going to get that uh, get self-loading cargo started. Uh, here we go, and they'll be along in uh, in a moment. Flight finder, there's the dev build updated three times in the past hour. Yeah, well, that just shows you how well and fast they're working on it, doesn't it? Okay, and we're ready for boarding. Cabin crew, we can open the doors now and start letting them on board. Thanks very much. Okay, so the cabin crew will start letting those on board. I will just get that okay, door open. No um, check that door. Get the main door open. There they come. All right, so it is will be landing about five minutes. Let's just get the uh, pressure set. So current Q and H is three zero zero two. Remember, we are in the USA, so uh, where are we? Okay, pedestal all set down there. Glare shield, barrel ref. I'm just looking. They've uh, got the missing textures just here, haven't they? Uh, from the Mercury to hectopascals, uh, 3002, that all set, get the flight directors on. Uh, Maxim, what's the difference between self-loading cargo and pack x I'm not really sure to be honest with you, I've not got pack x I don't know if anybody else in the, um, anybody else has in the chat room. Oh, uh, Lewis, on the OFP, oh you can ignore the time on the OFP, the OFP is late. <laughs> I created that a while ago, so uh, it was just this default setting. 
We've also got nice clean screens again here because as you can see there is no uh, glass reflections as such that we are also used to on the dead world. As we're back on stable for now. Right. The initial climb out here, there is no SIDS here at Mobile, so we'll just set a climb up to 12,000 feet. We'll basically take off, turn right, do our own thing. Iris alignment in four minutes. That's all set up and looking nice. Let's come down then to the flight management guidance and McDo. And let's see if we can get our sim brief flight plan pulled in. So AOC menu, init press. See if that pulled in. There we are from Mobile, Alabama to Dallas, Fort Worth. One hour, 35 minutes for the flight. HD, you prefer these screens. I, to be fair, from a, from a flight simulator point of view, and certainly from a streaming point of view, these screens are much brighter and easier to read, aren't they? I know they've tried to make things more realistic, I suppose. Um, but I think some things we should perhaps compromise on. Okay, so the operational flight plan that I've sent you guys, let me just check that. So our block fuel is 5449. Uh, 5449, that's correct. AP, no updated textures. No, no, they've not updated the textures. You've got to remember, guys, that this is a stable build, so this is everything 100% working. So there's no new features. We're just adding a patch to fix things that have gone wrong since the Flight Sim World update a couple of days ago. When the next stable build is released, that is the one that will have everything that you're used to seeing in the dev build, but all 100% working without any issues. Uh, at least that's how it should work. Payload 6656, 6656, that is correct. Let's get that loaded in. 64 uh, Airbus executives there. And a zero fuel weight of 47.7, 47.65, that's close enough. Get that loaded in. Gross weight currently then is 53 tons and a takeoff weight of 52.9. There we go. Yeah, I need to be able to get a, a handkerchief HD and be able to clean the screens out. <laughs> AD Spark, so when's the next stable version due out? A good question. It will not be released until it was 100% working with everything. And as you've already seen, there's been six updates today as we've gone through that. So lots to be done, lots to check. All right, so that all looks good. So let's move down then and check our current data in the aircraft. So aircraft status, there's the current AIRX cycle that is working following the latest update. So let's pull in the init request. And there we go, that's the fly-by-wire. And the alternate has not yet been populated. So let's get that popped in. Uh, Kilo India Alpha Hotel. Cost index of 34, flywheel 380 minus 52. Ooh, they both match. So the flight simulator weather and the OFP matches perfectly for that. What about the tropo? Uh, well, actually, that's quite high, isn't it? It's higher on the operational flight plan, though. So that will be 55176. There we go. Okay, so let's move on to the flight plan. Now as I said there is no standard instrument departures here at this airport so we just need to pop in the way we're going to depart from runway 32. So there you go there are no SIDs. Get that in, in, uh, inserted. And then we just check. Right so has simply pulled everything through here. There doesn't appear to be any waypoints there. Does uh, any airways there. So let me just double check this. Um, uh, to be fair, no, that is correct. It is a complete direct to, um, and they're all there. Let me just check. They match up the flight plans. So Golf Charlie Victor, Echo Lima Delta, Tango X-Ray Kilo, and Bravo Yankee Papa. And then it is the Wilbur 6 arrival. So I'll be arriving on runway 36 right. I am very unfamiliar with America, by the way. So, any local knowledge would always be appreciated. Runway 36 right, what a nice long runway. And it is the Wilbur 6. So I'm right down at the bottom. 
There we go. Roll the six. Uh, it suggests fire Slocko. Let me just double check that. Wilbur 6. Um, can't see Slocko on the charts anywhere. Is that part of the final approach? Oh, yes, it is. It's part of the final approach. It is the uh, initial fix. So, we'll get that inserted. That is correct. And we'll check how that looks coding wise when we uh, have the ideas aligned in just a moment. Okay, so in the RadNav page, I'm just going to put the, uh, the VOR here at, uh, at Mobile. The closest one is Brooklyn, which is Bravo Foxtrot Mike. Bravo Foxtrot Mike, there it is. We'll get that in there. So, yeah, Leonard, you've used this, uh, you download the stable today and everything worked fine. So that also includes like deploying flaps and things as well. That's interesting. Uh, Maxim, you agree that weathering is a little bit too much. To be fair, I think I agree. I think I prefer, for the sake of a simulator, just nice, clear visuals. Um, Mad Pilot, where do you program the minimums and the 100 above, etc.? You still can't get yours to work. Okay, well, we're going to go through that in a moment. We're currently still in the RadNav page, so we're now going to go to our Init B page. Have a look at the fuel. Um, so, our zero fuel weight is 47.5. Seven and just a standard zero fuel weight center of gravity trip wind of uh, a headwind of 58. My word, okay, for such a short trip as well. A headwind of 58. There we go, clear that GPS primary out. Okay, so fuel planning it suggests 3.9. We are taking five point. Five. Uh, we'll have 5.3 actually loaded in, so let's code that in, 5.3. Let the computer do its work. Takeoff weight there is 52.9. Takeoff weight 52.9, that is accurate. And the alternate fuel is 1.5. That's not been pulled in, so let's fill that in ourselves. Which gives us a time of, oh, that's interesting. Ah. That shouldn't happen. Okay, I'll go back to the init page and then back to init B. Oh, I've just broke the init B page. <laughs> oh dear. All right, fuel prediction. Is the fuel prediction page working? Nope. Um, okay, well, there's our first bug. Uh, can we talk, call the tech guys to come and uh, reset that, please? All right. Well, we know that we're going to have enough fuel. Let's face it, this aircraft doesn't exactly burn through fuel, does it? Uh, all right, so that's the init B page. Um, screwed up. Never mind. <laughs> takeoff page. Let's have a look at the takeoff performance. So transition altitude here is uh, 18,000 feet here in the USA. Uh, thrust reduction has gone back to uh, looking somewhat normal. However, that's 1,500 feet above. Uh, we use 1,000 feet above. So 1,024 one zero two four flaps one for takeoff you can see as well as we've rolled back to a stable build the flex temp is still showing 20 degrees our flex temp calculations for this flight is actually 65 uh good evening jay hug yeah i just broke it <laughs> oh well never mind that's the idea isn't it we try to break things uh, mark do i try to turn it off turn it on i did and i gave it a punch nothing worked Let's calculate these V speeds, shall we? Uh, so V2, 126. We're very light, so this is going to shoot up like a rocket. 126, VR, 122, and V1 is 121. So there's the takeoff performance. Okay, departure briefing is a straight out departure. We need to be a little bit aware of the winds. We've got that crosswind coming in. Um, winds 350 gusting. We're taking off on runway 32. There is no SID, um, so no restrictions at all, really. We'll just get to a safe height then before making that right hand turn as we go direct to Golf Charlie Victor. Uh, J Hulk HD can't even rescue this one. <laughs> Let's see, Let's press the uh, left side key five. Um, yeah. No, broke that. Never mind. Okay. 
So, takeoff performance is done, departure briefing, spoken about the weather. Aircraft, well, apart from the uh, inactive fuel prediction uh, page, <laughs> we're all good. No no attempts to speak of, and no threats here as well. Minimum safe altitude is uh, 1,800 feet, right turn after departure. Maxim, do I use custom Navigraph uh, nav data? No, I don't, Maxim. Uh, just because it's another thing that could potentially break. Um, so at the moment, we'll just use um, just use nav blue data. Interestingly enough, even with that fuel put in, if you go on the flight plan, it's telling us five four nine. Um, the actual OFP route is five four five, and our fuel two point one. When we get there, um, the OFP is saying two point three. So all that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. Okay, so our departure briefing is done as well. We get our ATC clearance. Let's just run the before start checklist. So our cockpit preparation is complete. Signs are on and auto. And we've got everything set to nav here. And the ideas are aligned. Fuel quantity is set and balanced. Altimeter 3002. Well set and cross-checked okay let's get that door closed there we go well done self-loading cargo you managed to close it first time of trying this time hi captain all passengers are on board and doors have been closed great stuff thank you very much Ignore that. We're not flying easy yet at all. I need to make a new uh, new announcement for that, don't I? All right. So we are parked on for anyone if anyone that does have Navigraph charts for Kilo Bravo Foxtrot Mike. I believe we are parked at um, hotel, and we're basically. Do you know what? Do we even need to push back for this? Strangely enough, I believe there's a taxiway missing. Um, can you guys see that taxiway right almost uh, just on the horizon? I don't think we can get to that. So what we will do is we shall just taxi down um, down the runway and we'll backtrack. Uh, so no pushback actually required for this. Although if we do go forward, we're going to run over everyone. So we will push back. Uh, a little bit and then we can just steer around them other than that I think we're about ready to go so we'll get the pushback clearance get the rotating beacon light on call our tug here he comes rotating beacon light is now coming on nose wheel steering is disconnected and acupressure is in the green transponder to auto just levers are idle and now the before start checklist below the line windows and doors set closed and armed rotating beacon light is on mobile phone off and parking brake currently on okay we're ready to start getting pushed back let's disconnect our external power goodbye and let's release those parking brakes and start the reverse it was raining here when I uh, loaded in that uh, that has just changed so now i expect the runway to be dry for the purposes of takeoff which means i'm just going to quickly relook at this fuel calculation uh not fuel calculation the flex time calculation so runways are nice and dry just calculate that and flex temp is still 65 so it's not changed anything that's fine 
Okay, so engine mode selector to one. Let's check that APU bleed is running and starting engine one. When they push us back far enough, then we will uh, stop the push so we can just taxi out to the left and around this little uh, hangar just here. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the crew, I ask that you please direct your attention to the monitors as we review the emergency procedures. There are six emergency exits on the aircraft. Take a minute to locate the one closest to you and note that it may be behind you. Count the number of rows to the exit. Should the cabin experience pressure loss, stay calm and listen for instructions from the cabin crew. Oxygen masks will drop down from above your seat. Place the mask over your mouth and nose like this, and pull the strap to tighten it. If you are traveling with children, make sure you put your own mask on first before helping others. In the unlikely event of an emergency landing and evacuation, leave your carry-on luggage and items behind. Life rafts are located below your seats and emergency lighting in the floors will lead you to the closest exit. We ask that you make sure that all carry-on luggage is stowed away safely during the flight. While we wait for Starting table, engine two. please take a moment to review the safety procedures on the card in the pocket in front of you. Thank you for your attention and we hope you enjoy the flight. Okay, so we'll just wait for engine two to uh, become stabilized um, Maxim yes so in order to change that to read no portable devices if you come down here to the McDo and click on McDo menu from McDo menu go to options and then from options I think it's under SIDS yes it is. so you can change the pack signs there no portable devices or no smoking uh, right Good evening, the rapper. Nice to see you. Chris Hogg, good evening as well. All right, so engine two is now stabilized. Happy with that. So, engine mode selector can come back norm. APU bleed can go off. Anti ice is coming on for the takeoff. Uh, APU master can come off, ground spoilers armed, rudder trim check zero, flaps one, and just see what our pitch trim's looking like, center of gravity uh, to 9.9, .9. so we'll just set that to uh, down a couple, uh, down 0 0.2. Ecam status looks fine and we're clear to disconnect the tug. So off he goes. So we'll just wait for the tug to get out of the way. After start checklist, anti ice is on. Ecam status checked. Pitch trim down 0 0.2 and rudder trim is 0. So whilst we're waiting here, Let's do the flight control check. Full left, full right, full up, full down. And you can see that I'm not on the custom fly-by-wire build, the speed that these are moving up and down, which always makes for interesting landing because uh, it's just not as nice to fly, unfortunately. Okay, so pushback is now clear. Taxi light can come on, although we're probably going to blind those guys in front of us. Taxi light is on. Parking brake can be released. And we'll check the brakes and start to uh, start to move, shall we? So, moving left. This previous stable build as well also rolls a lot quicker and easier. Mark 456, is that a mod that I'm using to control the tug? Yes it is, it's called Pushback Helper. It is a free little mod that you can get from flightsim.to. Uh, is it possible to put the Q&H in millibars in ATC? Do you know what, I have no idea. I don't use the default ATC I'm afraid, so I'm afraid I can't help you with that. 
So we'll just taxi around this uh, hangar. I think it's a bit of a free-for-all actually. There's no particular parking stands or anything at this airport. It is designed as a uh, Airbus factory and working airport rather than a commercial airport. So we'll just head down the runway and we shall backtrack on that. Run over these taxi lights. Kevin coming in with a donation there. Thank you very much Kevin for uh, your kind support of the channel. Any questions, let me know. We hope we keep you entertained throughout the uh, the evening. We're also on live weather and live time as well. As we're in the USA, we've got a nice daytime stream. I can guarantee the stream will not be going on as long as it did on Tuesday night, though. Okay, so I'm just going to hold her there a little bit short of the active runway um, as I want to get a few more checks done. So let's get the... Uh, weather sorted uh, let's get the um, transponder on I was going to set TCAST TARA we're going to get auto brakes max we're going to ding the cabin crew and as we enter the runway active runway I'm also going to pop the lights on here as well still got a couple of things to do as we uh, get to the other end so let's check TO config there we go. So we're not yet ready for takeoff, but we've just got a few of the main checks done, and as we're backtracking on the runway, we want to have all our lights on. Can we for takeoff, please? So if anyone is uh, wondering what it is that we're doing with this uh, test flight tonight this is the stable build that is currently released the stable build that you can go and download now from fly my wire site um, but since the update came the other day from microsoft flight simulator the world update uk it did add a few issues to it so they've just added uh, a few tweaks that will hopefully make the stable it's basically a patch a patch for the stable build that's why we've not got things like the uh, the ipad the cup and the uh, the new textures because we just roll this back to uh, patch the stable build okay so before takeoff check this flight controls checked so our departure briefing is uh, pretty straightforward straight out weather is fine but we need to watch those gusts on takeoff wind is uh, 35020 uh, transition altitude is 180 we have no particular climb out um, flight level today just because we have no ATC and there's no standard instrument departures here so following um, departure it is a right turn direct to Golf Victor Charlie. Minimum safe altitude is 1,800 feet and a right turn following our departure. One two one blue, one two six magenta, climb nav blue, twelve thousand blue, and flight directors one and two both on flex temp sixty five degrees. HD, did you say there's something about the spoilers? The spoilers are up, are they? You don't mean outside, surely. Oh, good lord. Well, that should have binged when we did the uh, TO config, should it not? Okay, let's see if we can fix those. Um, well, there we go. So we've got the spoilers down. I've had to mess with the lever a little bit. So I've now just armed the spoilers again. Let's just go back inside. So there those spoilers are armed, but they're not actually down. It wasn't showing on the flight control plate, but yeah, normally, if uh, you hit the TO config button, that should have uh, screamed alarms at us. So 
So, what's that? Is that bug number two? Is someone making a list of all these bugs? <laughs> so far, we broke the fuel page and uh, the spoilers appear to be up without any input from myself. So, transponder is set. Ecam memo is set. Takeoff, no blue. And we don't have an electronic flight bag to worry about. Let's get her lined up. There's that windsock showing us that uh, bit of a crosswind for departure. So realistically we should do a rolling takeoff, but I need to still run a final couple of checks. So we'll check the brake fans, brake temperatures. Brake fans are off, brake temperatures, they're uh, well within limits. All the lights are already on, anti-ice is on, TCAS is on. Let's turn those packs off for departure. There we go. Uh, so HD, yeah, if you can double check that. I, in fact, I'm almost certain it does. We've had that here in the sim before when I had a problem with my spoiler lever. And, and it was 1% deployed, you hit the TO config and you got the alarm, so that used to work. I'm not sure why that's not working anymore, so that's another bug that we've spotted. Cabin is secured for takeoff, engine mode select norm, TCAS, TARA, packs are off, anti-ice is on. Let's just watch that wind on departure, and let's go. So, takeoff, start the chrono, release the brakes, and side stick forward, half. 50% N1. And let's set flex temp. Man flex, SRS, and runway. Oh my word, what happened there? Um, okay. I don't think the patch works. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, quick gear up. <sighs> Let's uh, try and rescue this, shall we? <laughs> wow, was that a pothole? Flaps zero. Ground spoilers disarmed. Okay, let's set 10 degrees of flat, uh, 10 degrees pitch, and then set climb thrust. That's accelerating now to 250 knots. Let's set standard pressure. Let's get those packs back on. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't have the coffee cup. That would have been all over my knee if that had happened. Wow. Okay. So let's continue that climb out. Direct to Golf Charlie Victor. And engaging autopilot one. That appears to be working. I don't know if I dare release the cabin crew or not yet. Yeah, anything could happen. <laughs> you know what, Jay Hug? I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> if that's how it takes off, how the hell is it going to land? All right, let's set our cruising altitude now. Flight level 380 set, uh, 380 blue. And the lights can now come off. Uh, Nick, that wasn't anything to do with my controls. I, I need to watch the replay back unless somebody else can. But have a look at where my control stick was on the primary flight display. 
when that bump happened, I don't even think I'd got it back to neutral. Even if I was late putting it back to neutral, that most certainly that most certainly should not have happened. No, so you'd keep the seatbelt sign on. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not in a rush to take it off. <laughs> Mad pilot with that takeoff. <laughs> we could start the next uh, flight to Kosovo. Yeah. Uh, Nick, you're going to run back and look for that. That would be interesting to find out, wouldn't it? All right, so I'm going to release the cabin crew. HD, no, I didn't think I had. My side stick was, was still forward when that bounced. I wasn't neutral when that happened. Uh, Alwyn, it just takes a bit of pressure off the, uh, the engines and gives the engines a, a little more power for takeoff. Uh, the gaming aviator, that is a very good point. Standard should not be flashing at this point, particularly as one, we have not passed uh, flight level 180, which is the transition altitude here in the USA, uh, and we're actually already at standard pressure as we've got a flight level of 380 set. So, what a departure that was. Let's keep those signs on for a little bit, shall we? Cruise level 380, autonomous 390, and 390 is the max, so we're quite happy with the flight level 380. So who's looking forward to the landing after that? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> right guys, one more thing as well. I want you to stick with me. At the end of the flight, um, I'm going to let you into uh, a great little bit of news. So you have to stick with me. Oh, HD. Did I say altitude 18,000? Sorry, flight level 180. <laughs> At least we've got standard pressure set. That's one thing. So, Dark Fury, we got to 90 knots, and then we went to a VS of about 4,500 feet. Wonderful. The aviator, it's 2.45 a.m. for you. Whereabouts are you then, my friend? India, perhaps? We will, HD. We will. How long is the training course? About 12 months. I'm about six months into it. <laughs> mm. Okay, let's get that, uh, let's get the DI off. Uh, Lewis, I am from Yorkshire. Yorkshire born and bred, which is why occasionally I might get a cup of Yorkshire tea in the cup holder. Uh, right, so... Uh, no, I didn't see the rover landing. I was too busy trying not to join them out in space after uh, this takeoff. All right, I'm feeling pretty confident. Let's release the passengers. They can do what they wish. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to serve our drink selection, including tea, coffee and cold beverages. Please make sure your tray table is in the down position and clear any items from the aisle. As this is a paid for service, please consider tipping your cabin crew with stickers and super chats. Thank you. A little bit of wind flex going on there. That's the other thing about doing a, uh, a stream over the globe somewhere where it's daylight. At least we get some decent scenery to look at down below. HD, that makes us all feel better. So they have said as well they've optimised how the uh, aircraft runs in terms of frame rates etc. So I'm still going to turn off the first officer's displays just to grab those. Uh, 
Ah, uh, Mad Pilot, thank you for uh, confirming. I was 99.999 recurring percent sure that it was a bug. It was nothing that I did. That runway must have had its potholes filled in by Sheffield City Council. Uh, Alwyn, are these cirrus clouds? Uh, no, the ones we've got below are just kind of nice looking fluffy cumulus clouds that you see floating across the sky on nice warm sunny days. That was the Airbus party trick, the Harrier ski jump takeoff. <laughs> Uh, Peter, when will the Autoland red be red fused? Right, so the Autoland edition of the fly-by-wire mod, the problem with it, not the problem with it, but what it uses, it uses its complete own autopilot system, completely separate from Zobo, from Microsoft. It is built completely on its own, away from any Microsoft coding. That is why it's taking so long to do, because of course the autopilot, uh, the auto landing is just a very small function of how it works. It's obviously got everything else to be programmed in as well. So as amazing as that aircraft is to fly at the moment and test, uh, when I did sort of like a full test flight on it, which I didn't stream, uh, but when I did do a full test flight on it, there were still lots and lots of bugs making the uh, simulation rather unreal. So. It's, it'll be released when they're happy for it. Do you think we're going to fire me, HD? <laughs> Not if I storm out of the cockpit door and yell at them first for creating a botched aircraft. If they believe it's the, if you shout at them loud enough, they'll believe it's their fault and not mine. Air Trooper 37, so the cabin announcements come from a uh, little program called Self-Loading Cargo. I think it costs about £12, but if you do a Google search for it, you will find it. So, passing flight level 320. Look at that wind. David, you know what are the red and white balls above the glare shield? Basically, they're there for setting the perfect eye line. So, it's easy to show you if I move around the uh, fly deck. So, if we move across here, you'll see there you've got the red ball in the centre and two white balls recessed in a little bit um, to the left and right. So, to get what Airbus considered to be the perfect viewing point out of the window, you want to be sat in the pilot or co pilot's chair, first officer's chair, and the red ball should completely cover the white ball and when it does and hides it perfectly that is the perfect height and um, position for your chair to be able to get the perfect view for uh, flying the aircraft. Air Trooper is well worth it, it certainly adds to the uh, to the immersion, definitely adds to the immersion. New boy right there on the phone, would I like a job? <laughs> no, because I can't fly 737s. Uh, the wrapper on real time live where the Anderson set it behind you, you can see the Barcelona city lights coming on as it starts to get dark. Do you know one of the great things I have noticed about this, when it does start to get dark, unlike in previous sims, all the lights below don't just flick on at the same time. They all come on sort of sporadically, rather than as, as they should do. I've been sat at an airport before at dusk and occasionally a little office light will come on and then another one and then another one. There's no like it hits sunset time whatever time that would be and all the lights suddenly uh, turn on so again it's just great HD you rebel you sit lower than recommended <laughs> I know you said that helps with landing though doesn't it Lewis I'm saying on the mic of the flight yes I am I'll be on the microphone all night for you tonight so if you suffer from insomnia leave me on in the background and I'll do what I can to help Lewis, is this out? No, not yet, and from what we've seen so far, thank God. Um, Nick, have I taken off from there before? I have, strangely enough, yes I have, but it was the other runway. So if anyone wants to try something, get yourself on that runway, take off, and see if you bounce up with me. 
<laughs> See that form? Am I a real pilot? No, sadly not. I couldn't pass the uh, the class one medical, so not happening. Uh, Talia, still early in Toronto, only 4.25. Okay, so I'll come up to the cruise altitude now. And in this version, did the uh, cycle pages work? Let me check. Yeah, they did. Uh, oh, no, they didn't. No. They mm, sort of they semi did, semi didn't. Uh, let's just check those. Engine's okay. Lead air. Pressure, landing elevation, still minus 2,000 feet. Here's always a, a page for a laugh, the electric page. Generator one off, APU still on, and the batteries are off. Of course they are. Pete, you took off from the same runway before, five minutes before with that. What were you doing there? A bit random. <laughs> uh, feels fine. APU is most certainly off. 24 degrees in the forward cabin. Keep them nice and toasty. I need to butter them up after that takeoff, don't I? Uh, wheel temperatures are fine. Flight controls allegedly fine. Okay, well that's fine. Let's just check our flight progress then. So we, we departed slightly earlier than anticipated. About 15 minutes into the flight, we're currently direct Echo Lima Delta, which is the El Dorado VOR. We should be there um, about 45 four minutes into the flight uh, we're currently 200 miles away from that so we should be there in 30 minutes should be there in 30 minutes so that's 44 45 that's bang on time and we'll do a fuel check as well when we get there uh jordan how far can you go in flying career with a mild color blindness so far you got the ppl i think it may prevent you or it certainly did when i was um going for my class one medical unless things have changed here in the uk i think it would certainly prevent you sadly from commercial aviation but do check that out don't take my word for that a lot has changed since the last time i went to uh, try and get my class one yeah, look at that, that jet stream. The uh, difference between track and heading. Uh, the wrapper, so what does the class one medical consist of? Oh, wow, you better ask HD. Um, I'm trying to think, they basically tested everything. Your height, um, weight, your lung function, your eyesight. Um, I'm trying to think what else they did. It was a while ago. If you go on the um, Nats website, uh, I think they have all the details on uh, on there. The gaming aviator, anyone having server issues with the game? Uh, I certainly did yesterday. We didn't have, um, we couldn't get connected, and then just before we took off, actually, we got connected. So everything much looked much better. HD, they ask you if you're mental. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, I don't remember them asking me that. Bellbank, does the stable build have the tablet? No, because it's the stable build that's still currently released. It's not a new stable build, this is just a patched to try and fix the issues that the um, UK updates, the world update, uh, caused a few witches. So it's just a patch to sort that out um, as it is. I'm, n I'm not overly convinced at the moment. MFS pilot, I hope you enjoyed the VATS in flight and went well for you. So how many of you caught the uh, video I uploaded late earlier today of the top of descent calculator on the fly pad? That's a neat little tool, we'll be using that more often I think. Right, I suppose I best start having a look at this approach. I don't know anything about Dallas Fort Worth. I just thought it'd be a nice, fun place to uh, to land. How long's the runway? I think we're going to need a long one. Uh, oh, it's four, it's four kilometers long. Oh, no issue. No issues there. 
I like that HD. You certainly don't need to be an athlete to keep the medical. <laughs> Speaking from experience. Limited Kanji. Strange. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Who's just asked? Uh, Daniel, do you have the pur weird purplish around the plane in the exterior view since the world update? You've seen it on airport buildings in the overcast condition. Strangely enough, I'd never seen it before until I loaded in here just before starting the stream. Yes, I had it. I bet. I don't know if it's gone now. Hang on, wrong view. Um, yeah, it's gone now, but I had overcast conditions right at the very start of the flight. There was a rainstorm passing over, and yes, there was like a purple hue around the aircraft. Looked like some sort of electrostatic discharge. So, I'm glad that you've mentioned that though, because that means that that is a graphics bug and that is not another bug with this uh, fly-by-wire version. Dark Fury, how accurate is the top of descent on the FB? From what I've tested, very accurate. The only thing you've got to be aware of, of course, is the changing ground speed. Um, so it's worth keeping an eye on that. But we'll uh, we'll try and use it at some point in uh, in a stream. Then we can see how that works together, can't we? Oh, Chris, great that you're here, though, mate. And uh, as you said, even if you're not typing, uh, we know you'll still be here watching. Hopefully, providing you some entertainment uh, this evening. Uh, Lewis Aviation. So, what are the minimum specs for in this game? I think your best bet for that is to be do a quick Google search. Google Microsoft Flight Sim uh, 2020 specs and it'll give you the um, basically the the required the recommended and the optimum Scott S when will the new stable build be out All right just reiterating this again guys it's a patch for the current stable build this is not a new stable build um, and I don't think this patch is getting released anytime soon considering what we've seen so far Oh, Terry, you're very welcome. And Air Triple 37, we will have another update for France, you're quite right. Unfortunately, it is always like three steps forward, two steps back, isn't it? Uh, right, so I'm just going to have a look at this coding then. For the, uh, the Wilbur 6 arrival. Uh, Mark, you've had trouble with the ILS recently, it just doesn't show up. Is that a known bug or are you doing something wrong? I've heard a few people talking about this, Mark, so I don't think it's just you, that the ILS information doesn't populate automatically. It will be interesting to see if it does here. I'm going to leave it and let it populate on its own, if it does. Now, I've also seen on the fly by -wire Discord they're also working on the fact that it doesn't populate as well. So, Scott S. Patch 0 0.5.3 is currently out now. Um, oh, sorry, with the patch for it, but my mistake, my mistake. So, when will the 5.3 patch be out once all the bugs in it have been ironed out? Like the extreme takeoff, the fact that I broke the init B page. Um, is that all that's been wrong so far? I need to make a list, don't I? I actually do need to make a list so I can go back to Fly by Wire and say, uh, we we'll perhaps need to look at this. Is the patch through the A3 25 by Wire downloader? No, no, well, certainly not yet. I don't know if it will be soon. Uh, so in it be sorry I'm just scribbling down what I've broken so far in it be stopped working uh, take off do you know what the fact that we've streamed this means that I can uh, just show them exactly what happened so it's great to have this streamed another good reason I like doing it spoilers thank you HD spoilers were up in the tape take off config and they certainly weren't up through anything that uh, I'd done we also checked the uh, we also checked the lever didn't we the spoiler the speed brake lever that was completely up but the spoilers were most certainly deployed uh, MFS this is why you got the dev version yeah fair enough 
I mean, obviously, I prefer the dev version just because of all the new features that it's got. But a lot of people prefer having a good, stable build that everything that is incorporated into it does work. It would have been interesting to see HD actually if they were deployed beforehand. I don't know if the sort of like that cinematic effect right at the start of the stream. If anyone wants to go back and check this, you know when the time is counting down while I'm still preparing here and the visuals at the start, the camera spins around the aircraft. See if the spoilers were deployed at, uh, at that point. Um, because I don't think they were. I think it was when I armed the spoilers like HD just said. It actually, um, it actually deployed them. Uh, Mark, you've been meaning to ask this for ages. When the Meta says the wi uh, when the Meta says the wind is variable, what should be put down in the approach uh, sheet in the approach page? All I tend to do, HD will be able to confirm this, is if it's variable, then I tend to just put the runway heading on. So if you're landing on runway 23, I tend to just stick it straight down, wind 230 at whatever the variable speed is. Nick, have you just checked that for me? Thank you very, very much. Daniel, how do you get the normal portable devices to display? I shall show you. Oh, that's a bit laggy. Panning around. What's happening with the frame rates there? Wow, they're very low. That's uh, strange. Okay, not sure what's happening there. Uh, yep, yeah, so if you go into the McDo menu, go to options, and it is then under SIDS. And then no portable devices, you can change that to either no portable devices or no smoking. Um, oh, uh, my frame rates have come back. I wonder, yeah, they've come back quite nicely now. I wonder if uh, there was just some scenery loading in at that point. HD agrees with me on the wind. Woohoo, I'll give myself a pat on the back for that. Thank you for checking that, Nick. That is uh, quite an important check. So, we're still 130 miles from Echo Lima Delta. Let's have a look at the coding then for this landing. I'm going to put the constraints on as well, see how well it matches up with. The information that I've got here. Jet propelled llamas. <laughs> Great name. Do you have a floating glitch on landing with the A320? There has been one that has been brought in since the f uh, since the recent software update, since the uh, UK World update patch, and they're just trying to address that at the moment with fly by wire. Uh, right. So there's Wilbur, and then we've got what have we got after Wilbur? Uh, Broje, Knack, uh, Person, Funky, uh, what's next, Town, Funky Town, who names these? And then we're direct to uh, Sloco at 4,000 feet, that's actually coded quite nicely, looking at that. Yep, I'm happy with that approach. DJ, good evening. Sam C, great to see you as well. Alright, so that's looking good. I want to be 4,000 feet by Sloco. We actually want to be at 11,000 feet by. Uh, do, 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 do. 11,000 feet just after Wilbur. Looking at the uh, looking at the charts. So there it is. That's all coded in miles away. So if I want to be at eleven, this is where we need the top of the descent calculator to to do this all for me. Uh, so we're currently at flight level three eight zero. We want to be at. 11,000 feet, which means we're losing an altitude of 27,000 feet. So we want to start our top of descent with these winds as well. 
we want to start the top of descent at around 81 miles away from uh, 81 miles away from Wilbur so we have a while yet a while to go we can sit back enjoy and uh, enjoy the view and just chat amongst ourselves glad to see the weather's cleared up ladies and gentlemen we are about to serve our dinner menu please make sure your tray table is in the down position and clear any items from the aisle if you would like to upgrade your meal to a premium package please pay the cabin crew using stickers or super chats to help support the channel thank you uh, when would you use side stick priority? Uh, if one of the side sticks was potentially giving duff commands, uh, that would be one way of uh, one time you would use it. And as oh, as HD's just actually said, if you need to take control from uh, the other guy, maybe the other guy is training and something's going wrong, and uh, the captain needs to take control. Yeah, Propel Lammers, how do I get those engine views? Uh, so these are just custom views that I've uh, set up in uh, on the sim that you can use. And these are great as well because you get a little bit more, it looks a little bit more realistic than the ones set by default in the showcase settings. Huge line captain to take over from the first officers that scare you. <laughs> So, nice views all around at the moment. So I believe that's the Mississippi River down there, is it not? M-I-S-S, I-S-S, I double P-I. -I. I can't claim to know much about my American geography, I'm afraid. Do I fly with EasyJet in real life? Uh, only as a passenger. And that hasn't been for a while now. Thanks to Covid. And triplets. <laughs> yeah, the day we found out we were having triplets, that's when we knew our flying days were over for a few years. Particularly as under two year old, they have to be sat on your lap. And you're not allowed to give one to another willing stranger, apparently. Uh, Daniel, do I fly on the sim for a virtual airline? No, I don't. No, no, no. No virtual airlines. I just fly where I like to fly. So even though we've got one heck of a jet stream knocking us across the uh, the American sky, still nice stable air. <laughs> Thanks, Bluebird. Looking like clear skies, then, isn't it? Right. Well, let's have a look and see what we can expect when we do get to Dallas so Dallas is about 260 miles away now let's have a look at some weather oh, was I on the show come fly with me <laughs> that was a great show uh, do I think that the update for Microsoft Flight Sim was a bit big? Uh, well, <laughs> as it took me about six hours to get it all sorted before the live stream that followed, yes. Obi-Wan, is there something new in this version? Uh, yeah, the A320 can now take off like a heavy jump jet. 
Uh, that's a bug. No, this is just a patch. It's meant to patch the current stable build that is available. Um, but so far, no good. Um, I'm going to be back to the drawing board, I think. Let's see what happens on landing, shall we? If we land anything like we took off, then there's going to be some insurance claims. Messages received. So, weather at Dallas. Uh, do you know what? I don't even think the print function works here, does it? No, the print function doesn't work on the stable build. Uh, which means I'm going to have to scribble this down and do it the old fashioned way. So, wind is 330 at 1 4, so a little bit blustery. 330 at 1 4. Uh, visibility 10 miles, broken. 20,000 feet, broken 30,000 feet, minus one. So minus one, the temperature, altimeter 3093, 3093. HD, question for you. On the performance page, if you have got your altimeter set to uh, either hectopascals or uh, milligrams, then on the performance page is automatically put in so I know you know you know what I mean so on the performance page now if I'm going in there can I uh, automatically enter the Q&H as 30.93 or does it have to be converted I'll wait for your answer before I fill that in Uh, Ronald, the visual weather is fantastic in this. Uh, a game at EXE 2021. I use Simbrief for my uh, flight plans. Always using Simbrief. And it's free as well. HD, I should be able to enter either. That's good to know. Let's hope the sim agrees. Um, what's the minimum descent? Minimum descent altitude is 781. Don't think we need to worry about that with these nice clear skies. So we can get that populated now. So the QH is 30.93. 30 Temperature minus one. Winds 33014. That just slowed down the uh, the VAP speed. Transition altitude, of course, one eight zero zero zero. Minimum descent altitude is seven eight one. It's minus one temperature-wise. We could potentially look to add twenty to that. Um, I suppose it's not really cold enough, so we will stick with minus eight seven eight one for that. We could have gone eight hundred and one. Oh, Nicola's just joined. Nicola, would you have gone for it? Okay, so you, if you've just joined us, minimum descent altitude 781. It is minus one. Would you still prefer we add 20 to it? Or would you, would you be still happy with the published 781? HD's given his opinion. <laughs> you wouldn't bother with the corrections. No, it's only one degree over, isn't it? Maybe if it was three or four, then that would be a little bit different. Uh, a gamer, it, the stream overlay is from Fly Life Studios, my friend. Fly Life Studios. Nicola HD, I know you said you you were really, uh, really keen on the uh, temperature corrections. <laughs> I think if it was below about minus four, minus five, uh, then then I'd have gone for it. Even minus three, I'd have probably had a, th I'd have had a serious think. So Nick, you just rewound of it. So the speed brakes apparently went up as uh, I was backtracking down the runway. You heard a click and they set up. Right, I haven't got anything that would potentially have done that. The only thing that I've got, because even the thrust levers are far to the right, 
which is where the ground spoiler key binding is on my thrust levers I wouldn't have even caught it by mistake and the only time that they were armed was uh, before the taxi so I can't even say it was an accidental press of, uh, of anything that's strange very strange So is anyone here actually from the USA? Tell me where we're flying over. Because, as I say, I have absolutely no idea when it comes to US geography. Well, certainly not very much. Nicola, is this the new textures? No, no, this is actually the old textures because we've gone back to an old stable build now, which is quite behind the developer build, but as many people prefer to have a stable build, as it's one that works all the way through, they've had to bring a patch out for the stable build because the update a couple of days ago to the simulator uh, broke it. Uh, HD, I did know that, I did know that, I knew that knowledge, and um, no, I was nowhere near 72 knots. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can test faster, faster than 30 down the runway, but um, not that fast. Jet propeller armors, how do I know when to descend? Okay, so I know that I need to be at 11,000 feet um, by a certain waypoint that is coming up. I've forgotten the name of it now. Uh, by Wilbur. So basically, I'm currently at 38,000 feet. So if I work out how many feet I need to lose of altitude, so I'm at 38,000 feet, I want to be at 11,000 feet. So I need to lose 27,000 feet. So divide that by 1,000 just to get 27. And then multiply it by 3. That gives you 81. That is miles, 81 miles away. So about 81 miles away you want to start that descent. However, I always add 10 on top of that just to slow down. So realistically, that'd be 91 miles away from Wilbur, that particular waypoint. Um, I want to start that descent. And we are currently, because sadly the uh, flight computer, the flight plan, I've lost the frame rates again. The flight plan doesn't currently give you your distance to, there's Wilbur, look. But the flight plan doesn't give you the distance to it. Um, you just have to use the crude method of looking at the range rings. So when Wilbur's about here um, on, the, uh, on the navigation display, or above 80, I can bring the uh, range in. A little bit just there so when we start to see Wilbur here now then we'll start that descent good night Jayhawk see you again soon uh, I don't have a crosswind of 181 I promise but I do have a crosswind Uh, Sinclair, so I'm over Louisiana, almost to the Texas border. Ah, thank you. Yeah, so as HD says, you can also just add it up from the waypoints before it. Although I'm sure doesn't the uh, actual flight computer give you your uh, total distance to each waypoint? I don't know if it's on the left-right keys, which don't currently work. Uh, but I thought you could get your uh, cumulative distance to those. Does it not? Well, that's pants. I thought it did. Diego, your A320NX um, banks left or right during cruise. Have you got your dead zone set on your sensitivity to uh, about 15%? then um, if you haven't do try that out for me Tom Roberts what's my overall view of the patch so far um, not good so so far I've managed to break the fuel planning page uh, take off the aircraft just jumped into the air at about 80 knots uh, spoils went up on their own I'm convinced of that I did not touch any key binding because it's nowhere near me um, but yeah. Uh, 
oh HC is that how you can, oh of course you can key the waypoints into the prog page can't you but we can't do that in the sim just yet that's something else that see a lot of people say I want VNAV I want VNAV I understand that but I think I'd much rather have the uh, FMGC working better so I can use all the full functionality of it that way I could plan my own VNAV So I am definitely getting some frame rate hits here that aren't normal. Don't know if it's because America is just pulling in information. Having said that, those frame rates have gone back up now, so occasional stutters. Which you don't really notice until you're panning around the flight deck. Uh Combrig, you've got problems descending with the new patch. Which patch are you referring to? Alf Mags, good evening. Yes, yeah, so I agree with you, HD. I can work around VNAV. And it's good practice, isn't it? See if you can work out your own energy management on descent. Uh, digital people reporting frame rates problems after the update. Strangely enough, this is the first time I've really noticed it. <clears throat> Still don't feel like I've caught up on sleep yet from Tuesday or Wednesday morning. Have they updated the ATV20X? They've updated the dev build. Um, well, they've updated that five times, I think, today. So, this is purely just a test of a patch for the stable build. I personally wouldn't fly the stable build. I personally prefer flying the fly-by-wire custom build. Uh, but I'm not sure if that flap ballooning effect has been uh, bashed out of that just yet. We'll catch you in a bit, HD. See you soon, llamas. Nick, has it been updated nine times now? You've just downloaded another one. <laughs> I'd love to know what they're changing. I'll have to get on the Discord and have a look. Lots of little things once they've been passed, like some things are so small you have absolutely no idea and they make no difference um, to what we see here in the flight deck, but in the background, little things, little tweaks are happening. So Friday tomorrow, hope you've all got a decent weekend planned. 166 viewers, how kind of you all. If you could do me a favour whilst we are in this cruise and uh, smash that like button, that would be great. <laughs> they updated it twice during the stream. <laughs> Maybe they saw what I did. Uh, Dean Arnold on Twitch. What's the flickering on the left-hand side of the uh, screen? Yeah, so that's just a shading problem. That's been there since the simulator was released. It's a glitch that needs fixing, but that needs fixing by Microsoft and Resolvo, I think. Flitzy, is the uh, third-party airport Kai Tech no longer working? Oh, that's a shame. Uh, Nicola, have I tried to set flaps to a glide stop? Well, no, to be fair, the problem, uh, that's another problem with the sim. The ballooning effect doesn't take place with flaps 2 like it should. It takes place at the moment after the update with flaps 1. And it's not just a little blooming effect, it was worse than, uh, it, it shoots up about 4,000 feet per minute, it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, normally I deploy flaps 2 as the glide slope is uh, one uh, one notch above on its way to being captured. Uh, how long until touchdown? ETA should be at the top of the screen, my friend. Daniel, you're going to do Heathrow to Glasgow. That's a nice route. 
Tom, you wish to fix the ramp when it disconnects after 30 seconds. Well, if you download a free tool called Pushback Helper from flatsim.to, um, you can control the ramp independently. Uh, so that's, uh, that's great. Uh, so gosh, do you retract the landing lights above 10k or just switch them off? Both. You don't want to leave your landing lights out. They, uh, they add drag. So get rid of them. Uh, Chris, okay, fair enough, mate. So tomorrow there is no live stream during the day. If we manage to get one in, it will be an evening one. So around a similar time to this evening. Uh, Marvin Haynes, yes I am. This is a patch to the old stable build that is currently available. Um, they need to get a patch for that because that stable build just doesn't work anymore without the patch. Nicola, yeah, they'll, they'll fix it eventually because as, uh, as you well know, the, um, there shouldn't be any ballooning effect with flaps 1. Flaps 2 is when the flaps start to come out. Rodrigo, are the flight announcer voices part of the pla uh, part of the play? No, no, they're not. Dean, what's the highest altitude the 320 can fly? And have I done it? It's about 39,000 feet. Johnson at one point standard operator procedure was to have landing lights on at 10,000 and below to help prevent bird strikes not sure if that's still practice uh, I think well I don't know every airline has different SOPs there's no set SOP if you like Daniel you took part in the Gadwick midweek madness oh I don't go to Gatwick on a Wednesday it's ridiculous Helge, are these the new cockpit textures? No, absolutely not. They are not. This is the stable build, the current stable build, which does not have those new textures involved just yet. So, Saab F1 for flyby should use the stable dev or the custom. I would go with the custom. It's easier, not easier. It's nicer to fly, more realistic. So, won't be long until we uh, start that top of descent. Uh, Jadal K, hey, what's new in the stable, in the new stable version? Please read the video description. This is not the new stable version. This is just a patch for the current stable build. Brandon, now that's a great question. So, what's the difference between the custom build and the dev build? All right, so there are three builds that the Fly-By-Wire team will have for you. Build number one is the stable build. That is, everything that they have added is testing, 100% working, no errors, no glitches. Stable build. The next is the developer build. That is a build of the aircraft which is the stable build with lots of new features that are currently being rolled out and tested, fine-tuned. That is the developer build. Finally, we have the experimental build or the custom build. That is exactly the same as the developer build, but it uses Fly-by-Wire's own um, custom Fly-by-Wire designs. And that's a little bit complicated to get your head around, but you know the A320 is a Fly-by-Wire plane and how it operates, the control surfaces and things like that, the slats, the rudders, the elevators, all of those. Um, well, Fly-by-Wire have redesigned the Fly-by-Wire design to accurately portray how the real A320 Fly-by-Wire surfaces move and fly. So the experimental version is the one that I prefer to fly as it's more realistic and much less sensitive than uh, using Microsoft's coding. So um, hope that uh, went somewhere towards explaining it. I, I do get that. The fact that the team are called Fly-by-Wire. The Fly-by-Wire build have updated the Fly-by-Wire system. It's just got to get your head around that. Uh, Dean, you'd love to fly from Manchester to Dalaman, Turkey one evening. Well, Dalaman's a nice place to land. Uh, what am I going to do a face reveal? <laughs> oh, I don't want to scare anyone. 
Now those frame rates have dropped again. They may come back up. I hope they come back up for landing. You only notice it when panning around because look, if we're uh, if we're just moving along, it's there's nothing really too too bad about that. Uh, the wrapper, have you not tried the custom build yet? Oh, go for it. It's uh, it's great. And landing is far easier. Far, far easier. Alright, so our top of descent is not very far away. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking again on the fly deck. It will be delighted to roll that we'll be starting our descent shortly towards our destination and how the cabin crew will start preparing the aircraft for our arrival. If you can make sure the hours are clear for the cabin crew so they can make their way around the aircraft, that would be most appreciated. Thank you very much and we'll have an update for you shortly. What beautiful weather. Uh, so Brandon, is there any special things you need to do to run the custom build? Do you know what? Just Have I got time before I set this top of descent? Let me have a quick look for you. See if I can find you uh, a video I want you to watch. Um, do, 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 do. While I'm doing this for you guys, hit, do me a favour. Hit the like button for the stream. And... Um, if you uh, so feel fit and haven't done yet, please do subscribe to the channel. So, where is somewhere I did a custom fly by wire uh, video and it showed you what you needed to uh, what you needed to be doing. Let's have a look, see if I can actually find it. I can't find it now. <laughs> Kevin, do I have a live stream on Monday? Yes, we have a mega stream every Monday. It's mileage Mondays. We do up to about six, seven hour stream. Um, do you know what? I can't find that. I might have to search YouTube to find my own video. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Okay, so if you want to fly the fly-by-wire custom build, do check out this video after the stream. There you go. Managed to find that video for you. Have a look at that one, and that'll tell you everything you need to know about flying the custom fly-by-wire system from fly-by-wire. Okay, so it's probably about time we started uh, descending to 11,000 feet. Those frame, range, frame rates have gone again. Could be interesting landing if it's like that, couldn't it? So we'll start getting down 11,000 feet, we'll start slowing the aircraft down as well. Nicola wants delivery, so the delivery today it is the uh, fly-by-wire guys, the fly-by-wire's livery. So we're testing their, uh, their build today. And down we go. Uh, lose aviation, I slow down a lot. I don't slow down that much. Remember, there's a bug in the system whereby I can't select knots. Um, because I'm using, I'm not using managed mode for a descent profile, uh, I want to slow down, I want to descend rather at about 270 knots. I can't select 270 knots. 
in the simulator until I'm past flight level 250, which is a bug. Um, so I just have to roll back the max speed. And track, good evening. So our Airbus executives getting wonderful uh, views today. Not a cloud in the sky. HD's back. <coughs> So the weather and landing information has been received. Flight management guidance computer is all programmed. Landing elevation at Dallas is 581. No, it isn't. It's 588. 588. Auto brake will most certainly not be needed. Unless the aircraft does something completely uh, daft like it did on departure. The arrival briefing is pretty straightforward, so we're at 11,000 feet until leaving the star and then we come around to uh, send down to altitude 4,000 feet. The platform is 2,300 feet. Minimum safe altitude is 3,600 feet. Uh, transition altitude is 18,000 feet. And the missed approach, if we have to go around, is 3,000 feet. On passing 1,100 feet, it is a left turn to heading of 320. Minimum descent altitude, 781. Down we go. Leonard, the fly-by-wire team, will be a bag of nerves when France comes out in March. Do we really think France is going to come out in March? Should we put a bet on that now? Kevin, is the stable build okay for the uh, New World update? Um, it broke a couple of things. The biggest things is the flap issue. So I'm going to see if this patch has at least fixed that. Thank you, Digital Flight Deck, for uh, sharing that through. So, let's start preparing for this. We want 30.93. Three God, that's high. Have I got that right? 30.93. I'm going to double check that. Uh, messages received, meta. Yeah, didn't think that was right. 3039. Always worth double checking. Start to slow that descent down. So we've got no issues with uh, the terrain really around the uh, around the airfield. That's fine. We'll get the passengers in their seats. Get the uh, no portable devices signs on. I did put a duff QH in there, didn't I? Three zero point three nine. That's better.
Uh, so, gosh, you, so you got to say one of the landing challenges in the UK is beautiful. I've not actually done any of them. I've not done any of the landing challenges since it came out. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. And then send you guys the video. <laughs> Uh, Lewis, on the approach to engage auto land, you mean autopilot. Uh, so leave autopilot onto a thousand feet so you straight with the runway then take it off. Yeah, that's uh, that's fine. Unless, unless I'm not visual with the runway at that particular point. If there's a low cloud base, then I'll leave it on longer. Uh, Mark, has it proven that mobile devices interfere with uh, the other instruments? I know they've done loads of tests on this, haven't they? Um, I have no idea about 5G and how that's working. So, let's see if our RadNav page is populated. Uh, 110.55, that is correct, so the RadNav has populated. And in case we lose anything navigation wise, let's just pop in the VOR at the airport, which is Maverick. Tango, Tango, Tango. One, one, three decimal one. That is correct. Okay, so I'm now going to start reducing the speed as we need to be at. Uh, where's my star chart gone? So we want to be at 280 knots, not long after Wilbur. So this particular start, we've got speed. We basically stay at 11,000 feet for quite a while but we have strict speed restrictions to follow so 280 knots then down to 250 knots to 20 knots and then we uh, make the final approach for the uh, for the ILS Uh, Mark 456, I use Navigraph for my uh, for my star charts. I love that star charts uh, for all my charts, not just the stars, of course. But yeah, Nick, the American stars are so long, but they've got cool names. A lot of the waypoints have got brilliant names on them. So once again, guys, stick with me right until the landing. Uh, I've got some great news for you. Once we uh, once we touch down, which I know lots of you are going to be uh, excited to hear about, the one thing I will say is get yourself signed up to our Discord. Join the Discord server. Um, digital, if you could just queue the night bot for me uh, to post the Discord link in there or HD, anybody to uh, do that, that'd be great. Sign up to our Discord. You're, uh, it will be very very well worth it. I promise you that. hate these because they talk for so long on the radio <laughs> uh, Zach thank you very much what button do I press to check the cabins ready for takeoff and landing so it's this button right above your head where it says calls just select the all button so that just calls all the cabin and tells them uh, to start preparing for landing 
so just look at the VFR map for me guys this is essentially what we're doing so once we get to Wilbur just here we want to be by birdie we want to be at 11,000 feet um, and we want to be at 280 knots we're then slowing down slowing down and then we want to be at 220 knots about here and then we're basically slowing the aircraft down to make our circled approach here to come in and land at Dallas Fort Worth on the ILS runway 36 arrival mark 456 thank you very much for that donation there great to have you on board any questions please of course let me know and do get yourself on our discord channel as uh, as well make yourself known to me Nick what's happening on landing oh stick with us Nick you're gonna love it Lewis can I let you know when I've gone past the last star uh, waypoint uh, yes I can what is the last star waypoint the last star waypoint is I think it's called funky <laughs> mm. gotta love the American names uh, so what we got we've got Wilbur Broje Knack person funky town <laughs> funky town <laughs> uh, town is the last one town is the last one then it's after town we're um, we're direct to Slucko which is the initial approach fix HD, that's not true. Don't, uh, don't do it down. It's well worth it, guys. Trust me. Just going to slow that descent rate down a little bit. I'd left the aircraft in open descent, so I was descending at 4,000 feet per minute, which I don't want. Uh, Lewis, is the waypoint dead straight with the runway so you don't have to... It actually is um, for this approach. They're not always. A lot of the time you have to come in halfway through. But as you can see there, that is the coded flight plan for this on the VFR map. So we'll basically follow, come around here. And then the coding is to go from Slucko to Kika to Tuto to Basin. And that is straight on the ILS there. So... As long as the aircraft doesn't do anything like daft, like turn and head to the runway threshold, which it probably will in fairness, then um, it should work and be absolutely fine. Chuck, you've downloaded this and when you go into the fly deck, all the screens are flickering and flashing. Which version have downloaded, uh, Chuck? Because that did happen once with one of these versions. Jacob, no, I am not. Yeah, Lewis, that's normal, mate. That's normal. So Lewis, normally at the start, the start is basically a standard arrival route. They don't all line you up perfectly with your final intercept course to uh, intercept the ILS. A lot of the time it just takes you to a final waypoint and from there you either get vectored in by air traffic control or of course if there's no air traffic or control online you just vector yourself in to intercept the ILS at around a 30 degree angle. Um, but this one it does this the, the approach path for this actually does bring you in straight on the ILS approach so there's nothing nothing wrong with this one Sam see you keep getting crashed the desktop ah okay that's bad news isn't it um, empty the community folder that's the first thing I'd do and try again You've not updated any drivers or anything like that, have you? Okay, so we are at the Bonham uh, VOR now, or three miles away. We're turning left now, direct to Wilbur. A little bit lower to the ground, so passengers getting a good view. 
not very much out there, is there? I just can't, living here in the UK, you can't comprehend just how massive America is. I mean, who owns all these fields? There's millions of them. Presumably they're owned and looked after by somebody. <coughs> oh, Sam, see, I've heard a few people say things like that, that their community files sort of like locked in there, which is... Very well. Can you just delete the community folder and put a new one in that's completely empty? The UK fits into just a part of southern Ontario. <laughs> yeah, it is. We think the UK's got lots of uh, fields. Uh, Lewis, no, that doesn't sound too normal. Ah, uh, see, Sam, see, get on Discord. Nick's got the uh, Nick, Nick's got the solution for you. So we are now direct to uh, Broji and we need to be at 280 knots by this point and we are, we're only 6 miles away from there we need to start slowing down to 250 knots by Funky Sorry, yeah, HD is right, of course. Your nose will go down a bit, but it shouldn't actually point down. It should still be slightly pitched up, but less so than it was initially after climbing out. Ronald, we're not far now. Not far at all. So we should be landing in probably about 15, 20 minutes. Lewis, I'm afraid we can't give you any tips really on that because coming in straight for a landing depends on how the approach has been set up. What I would say is uh, you want to be about 3,000 feet above the ground. Notice I say above the ground, not above sea level. That all depends on the elevation of your airport. 3,000 feet above the ground, about 15 miles away. You can intercept a normal ILS then and uh, enjoy the view on the way down if the autopilot's turned on. Mersey Blues live traffic, do you actually see real world traffic in the same? Yes you do, I have seen it, I've followed it and I've also been chased by it <laughs> when doing a real flight, when the flight simulator came out, so that was quite uh, surreal. So remaining 11,000 feet until we get to town, then we shall start the descent. So we just have a little look here. There it is. You can see where we are. I've only flown over the USA a few times in real life, but one of the things I do notice is almost everywhere you look, when you look down, there's an airport. Ronald, we're not flying with any air traffic control today, not for a test flight, just in case anything goes wrong. They'd have all been laughing at us on departure. 
<laughs> wondering how on earth we shot up quite so uh, quite so quickly. Oh, the simulator stopped there. Don't like it when that happens. Harvest Moon, how late in the descent can you change runway without having to make a big detour? Um, depends on how much of a detour it is to the runway. For example, we're now landing on runway 36 right. If air traffic control told you if you were on approach uh, to sidestep runway 36 left and that was doable for you and you were, as a pilot were happy you could do that safely, then you'd just continue the approach and uh, go visual. Uh, Nicola, yes it is. Yeah, I've, I'm just reading the charts. They hold you at 11,000 feet all the way down here until you get to uh, past Funky and past uh, a waypoint there called Town. So you want to be 11,000 feet all the way down here through Funky, through Funky Town. They probably don't do that at the moment if traffic's reduced, to be fair, do they? When was the last time any of you flew the full star? <laughs> I know the USA like the procedures though, don't we? So we'll stick with it for now. It is awful, Nicola, but look, we get some lovely views. Passengers are close enough to, uh, to the ground to enjoy a nice view. And then we now actually want to start slowing down to 250 knots. HD, have you um, have you got the Navigraph charts up for this? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? So as soon as we pass town, that is when we can start descending to 4,000 feet. Oh, HD, fair play. Fair enough. Is your phone on charge somewhere? You can get Navigraph on the phone. Uh, Lewis, for some reason you were about to make a landing into Brajas and the plane just nosedived. Uh, what did you do before it nosedived? And uh, how far from the runway were you when it happened? Actually, I'm just looking at this. They've actually got the constraints in there quite nicely, so now we want to be slowing down to 220 knots. These constraints match exactly what I've got on the charts. Except it shouldn't be minus 11,000, it should be at 11,000. So Harvest Moon, if the wind changed 110 degrees, would there be a detour? It depends on what tailwind we were getting. You can land with a tailwind, of course. There are some limits. Uh, 15 knots. So you don't want to be landing with a tailwind of more than 15 knots. You just, uh, you just adjust your V-speed for a landing. Okay, so now we're finally passing town. There we go. Nice little view there outside the window. Let's start that descent down to 4,000 feet. So 
So we're descending now, 4,000 feet, 4,000 blue. We're about to pass 10,000 feet, so we'll get those landing lights on. I'm keeping a constant watch for my autopilot, turning the aircraft direct to the runway threshold. Michael Williams, auto land doesn't quite work 100% yet. It certainly does not. Fly by wire team are working on it though. Uh, right, Lewis, so if you set flaps one, that is the problem. Uh, obviously, that's not the problem. That's exactly what you should do. Um, but there is a problem after the update. They changed the flight dynamics, which means that the flight dynamics in um, the, the fly-by-wire A320 all went a little bit strange. Harvest Moon, you are more than welcome. So remember, guys, stick with me until we land. I've got some exciting news for you. You're going to love it. Um, so, nice steady descent down to 4,000 feet. If you haven't done so already, as we're on this final approach, do me a favour, hit the like button for the stream, show us some love on there, then YouTube will think that we are all awesome. Yeah, hopefully Lewis, that update won't be too far away. Okay, so we've got the ILS information is now populated and showing. The minimums are set. Engine mode selects are normal for this beautiful day. And uh, flight. Let's just check things is all set for the approach, so our flight plan sequence is fine. Now into the approach phase. It's already done for us. So into managed mode as we start to slow the aircraft down. Monitor this flight path, make sure it doesn't do anything crazy. A little bit quick there. So we make this right hand turn in uh, a moment, we'll see how the aircraft handles that. HD, there you go, another airport, I tell you, there's, there's millions of them. If you are in any country and you lost all your engines, you want to be over the USA. There's just airports everywhere. So at Sloco we want to be at 4,000 feet, after passing Sloco down to 3,000 feet. Those spoilers are up intentionally this time. I've put those up. Cabin crew, about 15 minutes to landing. If you can prepare the cabin, thank you. So I want to check how it makes this turn, see if it follows that track. If it does follow the track nicely, then this is going to be quite nice looking out the right hand window. Does anyone know Dallas-Fort Worth at all? Does it look realistic? I can't tell you whether it does or doesn't. So it's just starting to make that slow bank now, isn't it? Seated with your belts fastened and your trays in the upright position. 
Any items should be safely stored and remember to turn off all electronic devices until after landing. Thank you. Crosswind Cowboys, thanks for confirming that. You'll be able to tell us if it looks exactly how uh, how it should. Half mags, you've been to Fort Worth once, have you? <laughs> Can you still remember that? <coughs> Michael Williams, Texas, they just say, if we've got some open space, what should we do? Uh, build an airport. <laughs> I am wait HD, I'm waiting for it. Come on, direct to threshold, it's not happening. Yeah, let me get the VFR map off there. Uh, make it a little bit more realistic for you. I'm going to go flaps one in a minute and see if we blew it up. Sab F1, we are just on the fly-by-wire um, livery today. It's their handiwork, so we're flying with them. Tracking this turn rather nicely, isn't it? I have to say. Pilot mode that uh, is from Flight Life Studios, but it's only a streaming tool, mate. It's not available in the sim. I can't actually see that. H&M, uh, this is the old stable build, so that's why it has the old textures. So we're about a mile away from Sloco when we then can descend to 3,000 feet. And that is effectively, once we hit Sloco, to be fair, that's the initial approach fix. So uh, we'll put the uh, localizer on for then. And as I say, we then want to start that descent to 3,000 feet. Richard, mate, read the uh, video description for me. Uh, it'll just tell you about the new patch, but basically it should just look at stopping the flaps ballooning up when we go to flaps 1, which I'm about to do right now. So let's see what happens. Flaps 1, speed check. All good. So let's see if we get any ballooning up at this point. So the aircraft is just pitching down a little bit to compensate for that. Not too much, to be fair. Okay, so at least that part of the... Uh, patch appears to be working. Uh, the patch is not yet out. No, 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 no. This is a uh, test flight for fire by wire. Okay, so I'm now going to hit uh, the lock mode on. So, lock blue. Cat 3 single. Lock green. Let's just wait for that to uh, to capture. Still at four thousand feet. I think we're going to have uh, flaps plus one um, for a, or one plus F for a, for a while now. The flaps are always going to come out. I'm afraid until. Uh, Probably until quite a few more things are fixed. So we should start to see that localizer alive in a moment. Beautiful clear day though, so we should have a beautiful approach into Dallas Fort Worth. Localizer alive, that's coming across now. And we've passed Sloco, so we can now descend to 3,000 feet. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I think you need more than one HD. Danny, I sincerely hope not. So, look like the capture is looking good there. Currently direct to Kicker. And then from Tutu, we want to descend to uh, 2300. Lewis, yeah, that one worked okay, that didn't it? There was no ballooning effect just there. Is that another airport in front of me? Jesus. There's probably... Look, look one there. There's one just there. We flew over about 12 on the descent. Lewis, what? <laughs> Radio altimeter is alive. The Dallas Love is off to the right. What on earth is that? You have to remember, I'm from Yorkshire in England. I've got no idea what Dallas Love is. <laughs> coming in on this beautiful clear day. Remember guys, stay with me until the very end. Stay with me until the landing. I've got some exciting news for you. Get yourself on the Discord server though because you're going to need it. Oh, is Dallas Love another name? For, uh, is that in the name for an airport? Wow, Dallas Love. And I thought Robin Hood Doncaster Sheffield Airport was a rubbish name. Okay, so we're two and a half miles from Tutu. After that we can send to the platform which is 2,300. And then we should intercept the glide slope. Not far after that. In fact, glide slope's alive now, isn't it? So I'll tell you what, let's just uh, turn on the approach phase. Uh, approach mode, sorry. So approach mode is on, glide slope blue. I'm going to wait till that uh, magenta diamond is one notch above, then we'll go flaps two. And then we need to get ready to run the landing checklist. Okay, flaps two. We'll just watch for a little lift there, uh, which appears to be far less significant than deploying flaps one. Surely I think that's the wrong way around, but never mind. We'll watch that uh, glide slope capture in a moment. We're 10 miles out. Now there are lots of runways here at Dallas, why can see on the chart. Two runways very close together, 3, 6 right, 3, 6 left. We are aiming for runway 3, 6 right. Lewis, the approach mode cla uh, captures both the localizer, which is left and right, and the glide slope, which is up and down. So if I have only the lock selected, that is left and right. Okay, so we're about eight miles out now. Let's get that landing gear down as we come to 2,000 feet. Landing gear down, runway turn flights on, taxi lights on. Um, we'll ding the cabin as well. And we can go flaps three, speed check, flaps three set, ground spoilers armed, and speed check found for flaps full. Landing checklist, cabin secured for landing, auto thrust speed, go around altitude is set, and 
the Kamemo landing no blue. I do think that these wing views look cracking from uh, when we're actually coming in on the approach. Look really good. This is where I'm going to enjoy when uh, fly by way I get the uh, autopilot landing sorted. I'll never want to land, I'll just want to sit and watch. Jason Cathery Jewel does not work on this version, but the fly by wire team are working on it. If you check, my, uh, check the channel, I do have a, um, a video showing that working. Auto brake not required, the runway is four kilometers long. Look at that, all the traffic. God, I love the scenery. Absolutely love it. And there's the shadow of the aircraft as well, coming on landing. Okay, speaking of landing, we should probably concentrate on that now, shouldn't we? Okay, so let's uh, disconnect. I seem to be sat in a very weird position here. I don't know why, I can't get that view looking quite right. But yeah. that'll do. I feel like I want to be sat a little bit higher up so I can see the full view of the uh, outside and the instruments at the same time. Not really. That's a bit better. Wind straight down the runway today, so that, that's looking quite neat. This isn't the custom fly-by wire, so landing could be interesting. Okay, approach stable. And continue. Minimum. little floating effect there. Not too much though. Reverse reverses green. Eighty knots reverses off. Gentlemen, welcome to Dallas Fort Worth. The local time is 16. I bet it's zero degrees. Unfortunately, the temperature is currently a very cold zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. So, if you have a jacket or coat, you might want to put it on before exiting the aircraft. Please remain seated until the aircraft arrives at the gate. You are reminded to keep all electronic devices switched off until you have entered the airport. Should we terminal. see if those uh, spoilers are disarmed? Yeah, digital. With a beer in his hand, no doubt. <laughs> now this is one of the custom uh, handcrafted airports as well, isn't it? So there's going to be lots of scenery here. Let's get past those stop bars. I have no idea where I'm taxiing, by the way. I haven't looked that far. Okay, let's just configure the aircraft. So guys, what do we think? Successful landing or not? Remember, don't disappear. I've got some news for you, which you're going to enjoy. So I'm just going to quickly do this and then uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. So what I need you to do is I need you to get onto the Discord server. So if uh, HD or Digital can just queue the night bot for that. Get on your, the Discord server and as soon as I finish the uh, flight, there is now a new, I'm just going to grab my phone for this, there's now a new um, channel on our Discord server, the Pilot Briefing Room. Now this is the room that many of you have all been waiting for guys. In the Pilot Briefing Room now, there is a uh, set of manuals and checklists for the Airbus A320. And they were put together by HD. So 
they basically cover everything that I use when I'm flying and I have out in front of me along with checklists and things like that so you're going to want to go and get yourself on our discord server you're going to want to have a look at all these and I'll just run through these with you I'll open the discord the, the server's not open at the moment uh, rather the channel isn't open at the moment it will be about five minutes after I finish this uh, finish this flight. So we've got the Airbus Operations Manual, a Fuel Planning and Sim Brief Guide, we've got the Standard Operating Procedures, we've got the limitations of the A320neo, and we've also got a manual for Autoland, which covers all of those uh, topics. So a massive, huge thanks to HD who spent God knows how many hours putting this together for us. It must as well be said that this is for use only in Flight Simulator, not to be used for any real world uh, practice, and they are not approved or affiliated with any airlines. It's just standard information using uh, Airbus, Airbus information. But still, get yourself on our Discord and uh, go and have a look at those. I'm going to open that channel up to all of you on the Discord server uh, about five minutes after we start this. Well worth a read. There is tons and tons of information there and God knows I've learned so much from reading that. He says it'll put you to sleep if you've got insomnia. I guarantee it won't. It is absolutely brilliant. So do get yourself on that Discord server and uh, I shall open that channel up very, very soon, as soon as we've landed here. Well, as soon as we've taxied here. Where are we going anyway? I have no idea where we're going. The rapper, you were going to use them to become an easy jet pilot. Uh, I'm afraid you'd fail your, uh, you'd fail everything then. They're not approved. Uh, I am not taxiing properly here at all. I'm just heading for the first gate I come across. This airport looks great though. This is one of the handcrafted ones, isn't it? So. Many of you will know there are several checklists that you can find already online and that's absolutely fine. This one though works really, really well. Not just the checklist but the manual works really, really well and has been written whilst watching these streams for Flight Simulator 2020. So it works within the limits and constraints of the uh, simulator. Going to be absolutely brilliant. So I can't thank HD enough for that. He has worked very, very hard. And by his own admission, says it's helped him keep current, given the fact that unfortunately there's very little flying by pilots at the moment. So there we are. Uh, as for the patch test for this bird, I think there's still some more patching to be done, unfortunately. Alright guys, I'm going to finish that there. I'm going to head over to the Discord server now, open that channel up for all you guys to download and uh, and enjoy. Big thank you once again to HD for putting those together for me. Thanks to everyone who has followed me through this evening's flight. Big thank you to all of you who have liked the stream. Please also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And of course, a big shout out to every one of you that donated and contributed to the stream, either through Super Chats, Super Stickers or through the uh, through the PayPal link as well. I shall be back probably tomorrow, but it will not be a daytime stream. No daytime stream tomorrow. So turn that notifications bell on to uh, be notified of when the next live stream will be. Good night, everyone. I shall see you all again very very soon. I'll be on the Discord server. Good night. <laughs>